Hey guys, on today from the Insolvay, we have a Dodge Dart that we're going to replace the radio on. It's going to be a fun one, so stay tuned. So one of the cars on the list of cars that you would like us to do is the Dodge Dart. Now, though we're not doing a big system in this, we are going to put a radio in it. And the reason why this is a unique and worthy video is that the radios don't fit in these dashes. You have to do modification, which will make it so that this will never go back to factory. So it's something to consider when you're ready to upgrade your radio. It's not like if you put an aftermarket in and two weeks you can put it, pull it out. No, you'd have to buy a whole new bezel. So we're going to show you the steps it takes in order to go through and do that. Doesn't that sound like fun? Yes. Really? Yeah. You're kidding. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it, shall we? For this install, we're going to use the Metra. 95 65 17 HG that stands for high gloss now all these kits come with instructions Metro does a really good job of printing awesome instructions to tell you what you need to do to get the radio out of the dash so we'll go ahead and hand these over to Fernando and he's gonna start taking the radio out of the dash so now that Dean gave us the instructions for the dash we're gonna go and start taking the dash apart in the right corner of the side of the dash we have a plastic screw it's not actually like a metal screw so just grab a screwdriver and carefully take it out So you gotta start taking the top of the dash out. Okay, now we took under under the steering wheel control panel in the side. Now we want to take all the screws out. Carefully, the dash comes out. And then we have our radio. It's actually a single DIN with the double dim face. Now in the kit, it comes with the mounting brackets for the side of the radio. And then the really nice high gloss kit to match the factory shine. These kits look real sexy in the dash. Now we're gonna go ahead and keep this in this phone until we're ready for it. Okay, so for the moment that you've all been waiting for is making this fit. Now, according to the instructions, which are here, we have to remove an eighth inch on either side. The kit itself is just going to snap in. Once it's snapped in, you can kind of get an idea of the area that needs to be removed. And what you want to do is just kind of center it between these two air conditioning vents here. So just th this will slide freely. You just want to check your gapping. It's really hard to see in the camera because this is all so shiny. Um, but then you'll get an idea of the area you need to remove. 
So because it is black, you might want to pick yourself up like a silver Sharpie marker or possibly like a white grease pencil. Now the nice thing is, is on the back, there are some factory like lines. So you have a good idea. You'll have a nice edge to sand to. You don't just have to randomly guess. But what you want to do is mark how far down they go. So take your marker. That way you have the marks, it makes it easy. Now we'll go ahead and snap this back out. Set it aside so it doesn't get all screwed up. Now for doing this type of a job, there's a couple different tools you can use. Some people just use a Dremel and they'll just, or you can use a file and see here. For these, we like to use this guy here. This is a three and a half inch sanding disc uh, and an air sander. Um, using it for years, pretty proficient with it. But these do really nice job on things like this. Another nice tool to have is one of these razor knives. Um, if you put the blade flat on like this, you can use this to sand a thin layer off. It's very helpful. Now what you're trying to do is get the radio face to actually come through here. So you're going to keep wanting to sand equal side until you get this to come through. Because what's going to happen is this is going to push through and it's going to line up to this. So we got a ways to go. So let's keep sanding. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and snap this back in again. And test fit it. All right, so that is that. That gets that where it needs to be. Um, so what I did notice is that on the back here, if you take it all the way to basically where this lip starts, just grind all the way through that on either side, that's, that's where you're gonna end up being. So just grind it flush with that line right there. This, that's this, this edge that wraps all the way around. Just, just grind it flush to that and you're, you're good to go. I mean, you really can't overdo it because there's, there's a huge gap here. So, I mean, it's not like you'll go too far, um, but that's it. All right, so we got this done. So now what we have to do is attach these brackets to the side and we have to do some test fitting because we have to slide it in and out through this kit. We wanna make sure we get that just right. So we're just gonna loosely put these on here, get an idea of where it needs to be and we'll go from there. So according to the instructions, they want you to use some form of a pry bar like a flathead screwdriver and just keep rocking it back and forth until you break the welds that are behind this bracket because the bracket has to come out. So be patient, it takes a minute or two. But it eventually comes out. See these, these guys right here, these are welded right here. So you have to just keep old school rocking this thing. Fun.
So the third wire will be the black one. For dash kit, we're going to use the Radio Pro 4 RP4 CH21. Now this kit of course comes with instructions. They're very important. So make sure you scan over them to see if there's any special notes for your car or anything like that. Now, just like any other time when we take one of these cool little boxes out, this one is made to retain your steering wheel controls. We wanna go ahead and set the dial on this first so we don't forget to do that. So we'll go ahead and open this bad boy up and down here at the bottom of page two, we're putting in a Pioneer. It tells us to set the dial to seven. Now we'll go ahead and put a little piece of tape over it. Now this comes with two harnesses. This comes with the main wiring harness and then the steering wheel control interface. There's two wires on it. There's an eighth inch right here. And this is used for Pioneer, Sony, um, Alpine, pretty much any uh, most of the radios. And then you have this blue yellow here. This is for Kenwood and JVC. Now, if you have a factory backup camera in the radio, it will retain that. All right, so one of the nice things about this harness is that it has this relay here. This is the accessory relay. What this will allow us to do is if we are gonna add a backup camera or anything like that, it's gonna provide enough power to power up that backup camera or anything else we need to power off the accessory other than just the radio. Um, if it didn't have that, then the small amount of accessory the radio puts out through the smart box you'd have to add a relay it wouldn't be enough now we're going to just continue to pretty up our harness here so if you'll notice right here there's there's some longer wires and some shorter wires now that we have this together you don't want to cut this immediately and do anything because this long green wire here you'll notice there's another matching green wire right here now, one of these, the shorter one, is a rear speaker wire. The longer one is the reverse wire. So, we always save this for last or first, whichever works. Now, you'll also have a purple white right here, which is gonna match a purple white on the Pioneer harness. The purple white on the Pioneer harness just so happens to be reverse. The purple white on this harness is vehicle speed sense output, which, no, you're not gonna need that. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that and cap it off. There's also a red white wire, which is the parking brake output. Now, if you're not gonna do one of these handy dandy micro bypasses and you want to be able to access your menus and whatnot, go ahead and hook this red white wire up to the light green wire of the radio you're putting in. In this case, we're not gonna need it. So, uh, so we can just cap these two off. Now there's an orange yellow, which is illumination that we are gonna need. We can go ahead and cut that to length. The red wire is also in that harness. We'll go ahead and cut that to length, as well as the blue white. Now we're gonna add in a extra blue white wire so that if you ever decide to have an amplifier, we'll have a remote turn on sticking out. But we're gonna leave this one long. Now we're gonna go ahead and solder our harness together and finish this guy, this part of the install up. So we're going to go ahead and set this aside, let it cool off, and then we'll tape it up and make it look like the rest of the harness. Now as far as the steering wheel controls go, if you're never going to switch out to a Kenwood or a JVC,
go ahead and remove this blue yellow wire. If you're thinking that you might at some point or you want to leave your options open, just go ahead and cut it short. And then we'll like, you know, we'll, you can just go ahead and add a connector on it just to keep it insulated. Put a piece of tape over it. Do whatever you like. Just make sure it's not exposed to anything that it might actually, you know, that it could accidentally touch. All right, so this particular vehicle happens to have the USB and the aux adapter and the armrest. Now, because of that, the wiring for the aux is not going to be in the main wiring harness. Plus, the USB cable is not located back here. What happens to be in this car is down here behind this panel right here. Now, the panel just pulls out and then located right... So this guy right here, which just unplugs, press here, is the USB. To interface with this, we're gonna use the Pack Audio USB GM1. That's gonna plug right into this and allow us to retain that. Now back underneath it, if you go, you'll find there's an orange, a gray, a black, a brown, or white, and a red wire attached to a gray harness, this guy right here. Now what we're gonna do here is these are the aux wires. So we're gonna go ahead and attach our aux wires here and then run them up into the dash. Okay, the antenna adapter we're going to use is this guy right here. It's the BAA22, which is a what they call the Chrysler antenna adapter. It uh, has a funky little end on it like this. And it'll plug right in and we'll get our FM reception. turn it on and test make sure it works and then we're going to reprogram the steering wheel controls yeah. okay so the radio is working so now what we want to do is reprogram the steering wheel controls it's not totally necessary and as you saw these it does have features already programmed in what we want to do though is customize them because this the pro 4 can do multi-touch meaning you can have one button do two things and in this case it's got a foam button and right now it's only programmed for one feature. We want to program it for answer and hang up, as well as retain the VR feature. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's actually not that bad. If you go to page four, it'll tell you um, what's available to you. And you just simply press the button that's on the side of the unit here. There's a little LED in the bottom. You just look at the LED. And as you push the button, it goes volume up. Volume down, mute. In this case, we're gonna skip, skip. Then we have source, track up, track down, skip. Then we're gonna go skip, and then we'll answer call, press and hold, we'll end call, and then VR. And then the unit will blink out and then, all, then we're done. Now we have volume, we have mute, source, and go through the unit here. He's got a USB thumb drive in, so it's already pulling that up. We can go track up. And now we're gonna pair a phone to it real quick so that we can test the answer and hang up. So the phone is ringing. We'll hit the button once. It'll answer. We'll press and hold. It'll disconnect. We'll press and hold the VR function. That'll come up. All right, so we're good. We have the steering wheel controls all functioning the way we want them. So we can go ahead and shut off the car. Now the last piece is just putting this bezel back on to make sure it opens and closes.
All right, and there you go. So there you have it. At this point, you just go ahead and put it back together in reverse order, just like Fernando showed you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you have a radio in your new? Darn. That's right. So we hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a little bit, uh, no, I guess not. We've done a couple of these now. Yeah. But if you, you guys have any questions. Yeah, yeah. Put them down below. If you guys like these style, you know, little simpler, just radio replacement videos, of course, let us know. You know, we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, you know, we'll keep doing them. Uh, Other anything? than that, thank you for watching. You you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And if you'd like to talk to us directly in that you actually type us a question, you can check us out on Facebook Live. We do it every Monday night, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Yep. And that's about it. We won't keep you any longer. You guys have a great night, and we will see you later next time.